Yeah, I was. In fact, the voice is completely modified. It's all, but anyway. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being with us tonight and uh, share with us this fantastic topic of what's going to be our job or what is already our job considering the evolution that technology uh, had and is going to have. Uh, this is one of the events that the executive MBA of Tuzi uh, regularly organize for our fans and friends, right? uh, alumni, student and significant others. <laughs> And so I'm very happy that uh, apparently the title uh, was considered sexy enough, so uh, quite quite good audience. Uh, just a few words to introduce our main speaker of tonight, Mr. Paolo Tacconi. Thank you, Paolo, for being with us. Thank you. And uh, his opponent, Eleonora Catania. Uh, Paolo, Paolo Tacconi is uh, a digital transformation professional with more than 25 years of experience uh, across different industries, countries, products, teams. Uh, and basically what he did or what he's doing is try to make sense in business terms out of the mess of the accelerated technological changes. And this is his job, but also his passion. Uh, he managed several projects in the media industry, software companies, manufacturing. Uh, he worked for very big companies like uh, Microsoft, Ferrari, uh, Rizzoli, Corriere della Sera. The origin is entrepreneurial, well, his background as an entrepreneurial family. Uh, the educational background as economics and philosophy, and we're going to see that this background proved to be pretty useful. Uh, he started at Bocconi in Milan, and he's also a professional journalist. And uh, if you ask him uh, what do you consider your biggest, biggest achievement, he would say probably his family and the uh, the ability to coach leaders and help leaders in their uh, future professional career. He did several things in, uh, along the period of, these, of the digital transformation, starting early in 2000 and going to now. Right? Uh, Build a digital team as a startup, really early 2000, so at the beginning of the internet boom, you say, and it's boom, right? Uh, take a, paper, a newspaper and transform it in one of the leading digital newspaper in 2005. Mm, he build a, a web portal in Western Europe in 2010. He worked for Ferrari as a, the head of the digital uh, team of Ferrari, uh, building uh, the, the, all the, let's say, uh, digital communications tools and, and, and uh, interacting tools, both for customers and fans. So several million people, say, <laughs> and, and and now the last project I was looking is working to an uh, artificial intelligence insurance platform, together with a group of uh, Swiss mathematicians and programmers. So that's it. So I think we will have, we will have fun. And as far as Eleonora, Eleonora Catania. Uh, is a marketing professor in mainly international marketing and in brand communication and brand management. He had an extensive consulting experience in a variety of large companies, 
CNH, Fiat, Renault, Nestlé, etc. And uh, she has acted as an house advisor to CMOs providing insight as well as support in developing new market, tenant strategies, brand repositioning, and new product launch. She's been visiting professor at the Yem Lyon, the Helsinki School of Economics, and Cranford School of Management. So, that's it. Ciao. So, that's it, as far as I'm concerned. So, Paolo. I think it's for Ellen or at the start. Okay. Thank you for it. <laughs> okay, so hello, everyone. Um, I'm here just to uh, sow some seeds of doubt, and then Paolo is actually going to talk about what is really going to happen. So, as you see from uh, my experience, as Gianluca introduced me, uh, I'm a marketing professor, and my experience with digital is fairly recent. I've been doing some research on uh, how digital marketing should best be structured in companies, so how companies should organize to best structure digital marketing. Um, and as I said, I'm here to sow the seed of doubt, and then Paolo will solve the doubt. He, he will respond appropriately. Um, and uh, I'm indebted to uh, Ernesto Lopez, who's sitting in the audience for this chart. Uh, is your job going to be done by a robot in the future? Or can you even imagine that robots will be your bosses in the future? And this is the probability that the jobs listed on the chart will be completely automated um, in the next 20 years. So if you are an accountant, the probability looks like it's pretty high. And some other jobs, obviously, uh, look like they will not be automated at all. They will continue to be done by physical people. Um, another research, another piece of research that's been done is about artificial intelligence. When will artificial intelligence actually outperform humans at work? And uh, for some, uh, if you look at the chart there, you see that uh, where you have the little circle, there's a 50% probability that uh, it will happen, and then the uncertainty range beyond that. So, uh, as Paolo rightly pointed out when I showed him the chart, he said, well, um, artificial intelligent researchers are going to research themselves out of a job at a certain point. Um, and so, if you look at this, you say, well, that's the way it's going. We'll have to find other things to do ourselves because the rest of our lives is going to be uh, are going to be managed automatically by another entity. Uh, so I have no idea what's going to happen. That's what Paolo's going to talk about. I'm just going to sow the seed of doubt now and say, okay, but where are we now on this? Um, is it already happening? Because in fact, Artificial intelligence is already there, it already exists. And so, uh, on October 6th, so very recently, uh, an analyst at Wells Fargo downgraded Facebook, the Facebook share to sell. So it was recommending that you, if you have, if you had Facebook shares, or if you were a fund manager owning Facebook shares, you should sell them. Um, and the analyst that made the call was actually an artificial intelligence equity research analyst. So it wasn't a physical person, it was a robot. Um, however, the Facebook call was inaccurate. And in fact, in the following days, the stock rose significantly. So uh, that is my first question. Okay, we know it's it's happening, but it's not yet working exactly as we expect. Maybe in the future, what has, what has to happen for us to be really reliant on artificial intelligence to work in financial markets? Um, and then the second doubt is in my field in marketing, and it's uh, 
the fruit of this research that I've been doing, talking to marketing directors in major multinationals. Uh, and this is a fact, investments in digital communications in most mature markets have overtaken those in traditional communications. Okay, so that, that is a fact. Most major brands are investing more in digital communication than in traditional communication. Not only, but the digital space that you buy on the websites, on the blogs, on all the digital platforms is bought by artificial intelligence bots. You input what you need, the system does the buying for you. Um, and it draws on a series of uh, algorithms. Uh, it, in theory, buys exactly the right space at the right time, targeting the right people with your communication. So one of the uh, comments that came out of this from most of the people I spoke to was, okay, um, then why aren't we selling more? If we're targeting the right people, we're talking to you because we know that you were in the market to buy this product and we're, we've tailored the message specifically to you as a person, as an individual based on your preferences, based on your... So why aren't we selling any more? The only thing that we know uh, remember the famous 50% of communication uh, is wasted, except I don't know which 50%. Well, now I know who I'm communicating to, and so I know I'm inefficient with you. But it's still not adding um, significant value. And so, what is the solution? You can contact a so-called digital boosting agency, and what does the digital boosting agency do? It phones you. It phones you and says, oh, we noticed that you uh, went all the way to the checkout on the website, but you didn't actually buy the product. Can we help you in any way? Can we support you in your purchase? That's where we are now. And with this, I leave the floor to Paolo, who will give you many more certainties about where robots are taking us into the future. Well, of course, I don't have all the answers. Um, I, I, when, I, when I hire someone um, for my profession, I, I always try and explain that digital is science. And so when I don't have an answer, I just say I don't have an answer, and I don't have an answer. Um, some of the things will come back across the presentation. Uh, the only, as, as, as just a feedback from uh, what Manuela was saying is, Never trust anyone, especially in business, right? Machine or man, I would always try not to trust anyone. Someone is always trying to steal your money anyway. Um, and it can be a machine at times. Or, or many more machines, I, I would say. So be very careful. That's, that's my, my recommendation for now. But we will go through that. So thank you, everyone. Thank you to the university for having me. It's an honor to be here uh, in front of you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I felt very old. Uh, I just, I'm just starting. It's like 10% of my um, career completion, in my view. I have a, I have a stick in my, on my desk that says 10% uh, completed. I feel around 10%, so bear with me. Um, I, I won't solve all the problems about digital. I would be super rich and sipping a cocktail somewhere while I still work, so eventually I'm not that good. So, um, we already went through my presentation, so I, I don't need to, to say anything anymore. Um, 
just check Tartonac. Uh, it's my latest project here in Ticino. It's wonderful new insurance, but let's move forward. So the, 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 the topic today, you all know it, uh, is my boss is a robot, right? So it's not the future, it's today. And I will explain that in some case it's today. It's already happening. Not in all the industries, not in all the fashions, but it's, it's happening. Some of you probably, probably not the, not the younger in the audience, we remember this cover, right? So there was a mirror there. Um, then this guy came out, it's in the, it's in the, um, in the snippet of, of uh, the presentation for today. Everyone knows this guy, right? Jack Ma, fantastic. So he's saying in uh, 2047, the CEO of the year will be a robot, right? That's where we started with our conversation when we started discussing about this night, uh, making a sense, try and make a sense out of this uh, thing. I, I was coming here, uh, the, the only moment where I really can think is on my motorbike. So coming here on motorbike, I was thinking, it could be that it's only trying and, and keep people as little scared as possible moving it 30 years ahead. Could be nearer, maybe, or not. We, we don't know it. For sure, leadership is connected with technological knowledge today, right? All the leaders need to know where all the things are going or just optimizing, for example, spend or stopping spends that is useless and wasted in digital because there will be this long queue of consultants trying and say, oh, digital is the next frontier. You have to spend billions in this. And maybe they're just not right. They're just doing their own business. It's not sure that it's a good idea. But when you think about the robot, probably you think about something like this, right? because, well, it's quite good. Oh. This goes back to the previous conversation, and right? sometimes they miss it badly, right? Anyone knows what this place is? I guess all of you, right? What is that? An Amazon warehouse, yeah, perfect. So. Anyone knows why? How, how do I click it? Okay, here. Now, right, let's do it with the finger. Why this product, this red product, is here? Why is it here, exactly here? Anyone knows? It's closest to other possibilities in similar rooms. Perfect. So one day it can be here, and tomorrow it can be here, and then it can be here, and then it can be here. Another. There is no order. The order changes continuously because as, as some in the audience was saying, they put together products that normally are shipped together. Toothbrush and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you can make it. Sometimes they are not that odd, right? Sometimes they are a bit weird, uh, but still it's interesting. So this warehouse is not built for humans. It's built for robots, right? So by chance, there are a couple of them, because we still need them. Right? Apparently, Amazon still needs them. But the system is built to be run by robots, not by humans. Sometimes they make mistakes, we were saying. Oops. Something is going wrong. See? No, I don't think so. Oh, let me. Let's yeah. use the back. Oh, you messed. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Some of you have a feeling of what is this? No, it's not something like a net or something. Bicycles. You? Bicycles, fantastic, good. Five points. 
So these are broken bicycles, right? So this, the, some, some in, in China, there are all these networks that manage uh, free, free flow, as they're called, bicycle systems. Some of them get lost, some get broken. The algorithm is not so, so perfect, right? So millions of them get just debanked and, and sent somewhere to be in this uh, graveyard of bicycles. There's nothing wrong with that. Normally, what the engineer says about this is, hey, come on, it's only 0.00001%. But for a human being, you feel bad about that, right? When you see something like this, you say, hey, this is not right. Why there is no one taking care of that? Why do we need all this waste? Because you imagine that machines must be better than humans, and normally they're not. They're as good as humans can be. So um, we were talking about today, right? So some of the industries that are impacted today, I used to work in publishing for a while. Remember the old days when you were writing for your audience, right, your readers? Well, it's not there anymore uh, because, um, as you can see from this example, most of the traffic to these websites comes from Google and Facebook. I say, oh, wonderful, so there is more traffic. Hey, but it's not direct traffic, right? So it's traffic f filtered through a system, which is normally a robot again. It's an algorithm, right? Oh, by the way, incidentally, 84% of all the advertising uh, digital spend goes through Google and Facebook. The rest, just the crumbles, remains in my dear Corriere della Sera or whatever, right? Crumbles. Um, so a journalist, to be successful, needs to be very good at managing the relation with Google, not with you, right? Because if he tries and optimize for you, he's not optimizing for Google. Yeah, of course, everyone is saying now, yeah, but it, content matters, blah, blah, blah. It's all bullshit, sorry. I shouldn't say that on the camera. Bye to everyone on the camera. Oh, there is not my mom on the camera. Um, so, um, no, it's not like that. If you go today in the newsroom, you will see people having these huge SEO charts in front of them saying, oh, these are change the title slightly, add this word, change this word. Otherwise, you just go disappear. So you're writing for a robot. Travel. We all love our travel optimizing sites, right? Uh, Booking.com, I can find the best deal, blah, 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 blah. And in fact, what you see here is that 60 to 75% of all the reservations in Europe are managed through aggregators, so people that do not own a single room ever. Booking or, and Expedia, in the case of Europe which is a bit discomforting at times, right? Oh, by the way, these two guys control 80% of all that market, right? So it's kind of an oligopoly of this thing. And they make 5% of all the Google advertising revenues. So imagine how the ability they have to deal with Google compared to the one of that hotel down there, right? That can only go online and try and buy Whatever, right? These guys go there with billions. Um, and ninety percent of the hotels in Europe have less than ten employees. So imagine that they have to deal with all this complexity, blah blah blah. That's complicated. So I'm working for the customer. I'm working for the robot. Spend half of my time checking online comments. Is the always the guy that thinks that coffee is too cold and I don't like it? What do? How do I then deal with that? It's complicated. Finance, um, so these are forecasts. By 2020, 10% of all the global assets will be managed by machines, apparently, with all the risk associated. Although sometimes there are risks with humans too. We know that people cheat a lot on money. Um, then put yourself in the shoes of someone that is issuing stuff, right, like bonds or your uh, company stocks or whatever, hey, you have to imagine that they're going to go in a system that will buy and sell them through algorithm. So, of course, what comes out of that is that data and information 
management will manage the whole thing. But I really want to focus on one thing in the next couple of minutes, right, which is about leadership. So these things is happening, and we know that. No one can stop it. So then we have to be better leaders. Which is, and it's not just about knowing the stuff, knowing how Google works. That's, take it for granted. You have to know it. Like you have to know, it, it was funny because when I was, when you were showing the list of the um, professions that were disappearing, I was checking the first five, I cannot go back because I lose too much time, but the first five are absolutely critical for startuppers. Accounting, selling, so you still need the talent for that. It's the profession that is disappearing. It's not that you can just say, oh, accounting will be made by a machine. You have to know how to make the damn accounting yourself at the very start, right? If you start a company, and still you'd rather check what the machine is doing anyway. So it's about leadership. And um, having spent a bit of time in an environment where we were doing digital transformation or, or IT companies, situations where uh, you had to deal with technology, I came out with a couple of let's say, uh, experiences on my skin. This is about digital leadership. Some of them can be very discomforting. And this is my view. So there are non-digital leaders, right? So the typical manager, right? Or the manager, or famous manager. So when you think about what he needs, he needs more people, more budget. Right? That's, that's a big manager is a guy with a lot of people, with a lo big salary, with a lot of budget, right? It's all about the buy. I need the share of budget. In digital, all you need is access to machines. You need to have the keys to the machines. You need to be near the heart of the system. If you're not there, you don't control anything. You're just a... Uh, somewhere sitting somewhere in a company where a part of the company that doesn't have any impact. In traditional world, it's all about the formal relations with other leaders, right? You go to dinners, and then you go to, this, to the other place, and then you go to this. Well, for a digital person, it's data exchange, right? And it's not just a platform, it's not just about LinkedIn. You need to be good in having data, dealing with data, trading data with other leaders. You have to know stuff in data form that other people value. Competition is one of my favorite. In the traditional world, it's all about taking market share, the, the mythical market share. We sold more cars, we did more of this, the market is big as this, as big as that. In digital, normally competition comes from outside. Right? So if you're a Hilton, your problem is not Marriott, it's Booking.com. Does a booking.com decide that deprioritize you because it doesn't like you, or you don't pay the commission, you just lose 30% of your business overnight. Boom. So you'd rather be careful. Efficiency is a budget cut, right? When in a company, some of you, well, most of you, I guess, worked in companies, the big fear is budget cut. There is a budget cut coming. In the digital world, you think about efficiency every day. Right? You want to do things with less, 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 less. Save, 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 save. Because you need to do R&D. You need to do new things to stay on top. At the end, you have to, the, the best way to think about this is think that your boss is a machine and you have like a North Pole where you can point to. Just uh, anecdotally, I happened to work with bosses that were very near to machines. I, once, I will never say where, but it's a famous software company. So they spent millions in educating humans to be less machine-like. Uh, those of you that are in this kind of training thing know very much about that, like emotional empathy and all those things, because humans now tend to be like machines and limiting their own creativity, their own ability to change things and try and be as much machine as they can. Don't do it. A machine will always outwork you. It can work 24 hours a day, so forget about it. 
Good, so leaders. A lot of songs tend to sort of exist in the, in the near future. I mean, a song like Everyday Robots is sort of science fiction where people don't really use their hands anymore. And have grown huge thumbs. <laughs> I don't know why I feel like that, but technology and melancholy are very powerful together. We are everyday robots on our phones. In the process of getting home Looking like standing stones Out there on our own Where everyday robots in control In the process of being so autumnal. driving in a Jason car Sorry, I'm stopping an emotion for me at least. It's one of my favorite artists. I was recently in Berlin to just on, on purpose to see him live. But for me, Damon Albarn is an example of today's leadership. So the, what we showed is that the artist is performing in front of a crowd, like I'm doing now, but in the crowd there are androids. So this for me is, is a great example of how a leader needs to be today. You need to imagine that is, uh, the, the, the thing he has to bond with, he has to connect with, is a mix of machines and humans. And the fact that he experienced it, I mean, he can't just think about that or write a song about that. He, experienced that. He wanted to create a situation where a robot was in the audience. And he wanted to see the, re the reaction for that. He understands what it means to bond with machines. Not just using them, but bonding with them. If I can use a strong image for that, you have to go to bed with them. Like it or not. And, and as a side aspect, business-wise, he understands that his business depends on robots. You know what's the number one reason why a song is successful today? It's Spotify, most listened songs, right? So it's the algorithm that decides that my song is better than yours. More people listen to that, so more people need to, to listen to that, blah, blah, blah. If you miss that, you're off. So he has also business interest in that. And talking business, um, needless to say, digital transformation is a huge business. You know that, right? There are huge companies that are trying to get your budget to do the digital transformation. Um, sectors are in, in a different stage of maturity from that point of view. Probably you've seen something like this before, so I go very, very fast. I'm a big fan of the fashionista label. Fashionista label is people that, when they do, for example, my job, get hired by Ferrari, and they go to the board, right? And the board says, we need to build an app. And you're like, why? This is the fashionista impact, right? Everyone has an app. I have a hundred of apps on, on my phone. Why Ferrari doesn't have an app? This is real life, right? Then you say, all right, do you have data somewhere? Well, no, if, no, we're fixing it. You know, CRM is maybe, how can you build an app? So this is the fashionista approach to technology. I personally hate it. I never do it. But you see how popular it is. And it happens a lot in media. And in, and in media buying, and, in, and in, if I'm allowed, in marketing, because it's, it's such an emotion-driven uh, activity for the good and sometimes for the bad, they tend to do a lot of fashionista stuff, right? We need to have a great Instagram profile. Why? 
what's your story at the end? Why, why should you tell something to people through Instagram? That's the fashionist approach. Um, what is 100% sure is that companies that do digital transformation normally uh, has a higher growth in terms of revenue. That's statistics, right? So just not doing that is eventually not an option. Sooner or later, you're going to get in trouble. It's the how that is difficult. It's not the fact that you have to do it or when. It's how you do it. We're going to come to that later. And talking about just one example, there are a lot of different ways to organize your digital execution. We see four here, right? Uh, this is an Accenture, very nice story. So I dealt with a number of companies recently. A lot of people just say de decentralized, which is everyone do a bit of everything, right? So let's leave a thousand flowers bloom, right? So the marketing department makes his own app. The sales department make another app, and then someone has to do another app. Um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not a great idea. Most of the companies I experienced as digital as a minor priority, so they have a bit of a layer, like, all right, yeah, we have five apps, but they're on the same platform. We use the same vendor. Wow. Big effort, right? So oh, there's this. People don't fight. No, but it's my budget, so I choose my vendor. Center of Excellence is another solution. Some, most of the financial service companies, for example, do that, right? They create, they understand that this is running too fast, so they create a center of excellence that then spill knowledge across the organization. The last one is you just move the core business of your company to digital. Um, I had a, uh, probably the only one I experienced was Burda company, right, the publishing company. They decided, took 10 years, right? They said, right, 10 years we're gonna become digital. They made it. They just decided from day one that it, was, that it took 10 years, but that was the end result. Instead of reacting, they were trying and driving. So how do you do that? In practical terms, what do you need to do that? I'm going to make some example of very practical things you'd rather do. Then I have I, I develop a, a bit of my own way of looking at life in digital, and my view is this: normally. In a company, what happens is that someone has a strategy, then someone executes it, right? Everyone heard about that, right? Oh, there is a strategic. Even in universities, are a bit like that, right? You study strategy, and then eventually someone is doing the accounting. Or you do strategy, and then someone do the banners for the advertising. That's not the right way to do it. No company can succeed, from my point of view, from using this approach which is fantastic for known digital situations where you need strong guidance from above that then goes down to people that execute. Modern organization doesn't work like that. So you'd rather have what I call continuous anticipation. So everyone needs to feel the urgency of change in the business. Every day, every day, every day, every day. And if you're not in that mentality, start thinking about, thinking about how can you change it? And it needs to fill down to hiring, hiring. Uh, teaching, I think, uh, attending MBAs. Think about anticipation, anticipation. If there is one thing you should never do in digital is to arrive late. Because if you arrive late or too early, you have a big trouble. You have to be in a continuous anticipation which is, oh, I fixed the banners. Now there is Facebook. Oh, my God. So don't stay stick to the damn banners. Move to Facebook gradually, right? Think in anticipation. And the mentality of the people need to be like that. Which doesn't mean that you need nerds or people that only love to do crazy things or think about whatever big plan for the future, fantastic digital world. 
but people that understand the two sides of the thing. Seems easy. For me, it's, uh, it's like free cash flow, right? If a company doesn't have free cash flow, it's essentially broken. Yeah, you can hide it for a couple of years. You can say, no, but we now care about growth, and then we care about uh, whatever. Come on, if there is no free cash, there is something that is not working. In digital companies, <laughs> that's an issue, right? Most of the digital companies do not have any free cash, which is something we should think about for a second. But anyway, so recommendation, probably that's what you expect from someone that, is, that has gray hairs, uh, made in digital battlefield. So the first one is make sure you know how to talk to engineers. I'm not an engineer myself, uh, so people look at me with suspect. I always say, yeah, but I did eight math exams at Bocconi, and they say, all right, so we can have a coffee. That's the, ma the maximum they, they accept from me, right? Because engineers are the guys that talk to robots, right? So you have to talk to them because they, then they talk to robots. So they'd rather get the message. Um, and they have a specific work ethic. How many of you had the occasion to work with engineers on a day-to-day -day basis? All right. Is it easy? Okay, so get ready, bond with engineers, go to their bars, go to their, pa I know it's sometimes it's like, oh, I'm not sure, I'd rather go to the aperitivo while they go for the beer, right? This is the number one success uh, rule for the next years. I would recommend to have engineering friends not on a personal basis, on a professional basis. You have your life with poets. Um, and make sure if you work in an organization, not to get to them, because that's the worst thing you can do. I right? say, we want to stay in our own cave, right? With our computers, right? It's dark. No one is allowed. It smells strange. Don't allow that. This is for leaders is the number one challenge. I experience that a lot, right? The team need to work together. Marketeers, creative people, accountants, engineers, one team. Otherwise they start, you know, drifting. Okay, take small risks very often which is, a, a, if I can, probably one of the reasons why some of the people in, in, uh, in uh, media and advertising make it wrong. They say, oh, now we take the GRP money and we move it to digital. No. Why? Do it gradually. Test small things gradually. Don't go crazy with big business. Oh, if we, if we get this pressure, we're going to get these clicks, then, then they go here, and then they go there. Try small. For our insurance project, we have budgets that are 100 euros, right? But we have all the system to measure what those 100 euros produce. Sometimes they produce zero. Sometimes they produce something. But if you put 1,000, it's not changing. It's, you get the same result by 10. But if you work, for example, with agencies, agencies normally are paid on what? The money they manage. So guess what? They say, oh, you need to spend not 100 or 1,000, a million, because they get 8% out of that. So it's the system that is built in a strange way. Um, bad, bad news are better than so, so news, which is something that for people in business is very discomforting. Because in business, you're asked to be successful, not to make mistakes, right? You feel bad about mistakes. Well, the best thing in digital is to make mistakes on a small scale. And you'd rather have very negative signals than some positive. 
I, I, I'm a motorbike fan, right? So I remember my first um, mechanical, right? When I was 16 years old, you know, with, with greasy hand. And he, 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 he told me, come with a broken motorbike. Don't come with a motorbike that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. Because I don't know what to do with that. So make sure that you build the system in a way that it's uh, white or black, right? Try and think in mathematical terms, right? There will be a lot of emotion, especially if you go through transformation. There is a lot of emotion because people say, oh, my job is going to be taken by someone else, it's going to be taken by a machine, blah, blah, blah. I've experienced a thousand times. I am the big black guy with the axe, right? Because I bring digital and technology in organizations, right? So, woof. So people get nervous. Try and bring data. That's my advice. Why this? Uh, this was the last meeting of the Chinese Communist Party. Um, why am I putting it that? Uh, on top of the respect for the country, because you have to be aware of big meetings. Big meeting is very good if you have to run a country of 1.5 billion people, not to decide what banners you have to serve on your Facebook profile. Right? Everyone has an opinion. Oh, why don't we add a bit of orange? Why don't we make it a bit more fun? Let it done by the professionals, please. Everyone has an opinion on digital. This is what drives people like me crazy, right? I've seen my daughter using this fantastic app, blah, 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 blah. And meanwhile, Amazon is coming and eating up your business. You've heard about the latest big merger in, in the US. I, I can spell the name wrong, but essentially it's an insurance company and a pharmaceutical company that joined together. It was the biggest acquisition, Aetna and another one. Yeah, why they did it? Because one week ago, Facebook, um, sorry, Amazon announced that they is going to sell uh, pharmaceutical products. If they start selling the one under license, not the, the normal one that they already sell, no, the one under license. So that's going to kill the whole business. So they had to do the business, the, the, the deal. But anyway, going back to practical thing, get rid of big meetings. They're useless. Don't be distracted by popular technological gadgets. Please, don't do it. One day there is the one thing and then there is another one. And the iPhone is everything. 89% of the market share is Android today. Yeah, but iPhone is better. What does it mean exactly, right? <laughs> Why are you measuring that? We need an app is not something you should say ever. Oh, by the way, building an app is very difficult. The great tech business uh, ad advanced thing will come from the big companies anyway. So don't get fooled. Yeah, sometimes they can, right, there is the unicorn that comes out with something. But it's always about connecting the dot. Don't try and build a definitively app for auto automotive. It's not going to happen. I, I'm 100% sure about that. It's not a question of money and other stuff. It's not going to happen. I'll explain you why later on. And as much as you can, build a platform and not a product, because product gets old. Platforms normally get a bit more, um, more stable, and you can build on them. So why, um, sorry, go back to this. Why you won't make the final great fantastic app? What's your view on that? For the simplest of the reason. You will never be able to hire the best talent in the, in the industry. Right, so I, I worked at Ferrari, right? Ferrari. Some of you know Ferrari, right? Maranello, the red cars, right? Okay, so you try that. I mean, the digital team at Ferrari, wow. Half a billion people know the brand Ferrari and interact with, the, with that. You will say, oh, you have the queue out of people that want to come and work for the digital team at Ferrari. No. Why? Ah, they come and then they say, do you have a stock plan? 
Uh, no, we, no, because we're a manufacturing company. Oh, no, so I, I want a stock plan. I'm going to go to Google. They, they have a stock plan. They're going to give me a career, and I can, you know, go together with my friends, and I live in London, not in Maranello. Discussion closed. Finish. So for all of you that will happen to work in non-digital industry, the number one challenge you're going to have is hiring. So be ready for that. Make sure that you have great HR, can access a pool of talent, keep your talent, nurture your talent, send them to university to develop their skills, because that's the number one scarcity. Um, so as a closing, uh, I happened to study philosophy at Bocconi, for how ironic it can be. Yes, it happened in the old days. It was when university were a slightly different thing, I would say. So Wittgenstein, which is the guy that I studied for my dissertation, used to say, was an engineer on his own, said, when we say that machines cannot think or feel pain, is it like saying that the number three cannot be a color? So is there something in the way we think and talk about machines that is broken? Are we using the right language? With this idea that it's us and them. And I don't want to make it philosophical. It, it's, it's like Wittgenstein used to say, language is a tool, right? If you start talking the wrong language, uh, it's not necessarily going to work well for your career or your company. And the second is, if we say the machines cannot fly, and we're in the 18th century, are we saying something true or not? Hmm. This is difficult. It was true, right? And then it's not true anymore. So this truth about machines can change over time. So you have to stay a bit ahead, having this anticipation, this continuous anticipation idea. It doesn't mean to trust machines blindly, but we need to think and act, solve business problems with machines, with machines. Make sure that in your routine, your daily routine, it's not just updating your Facebook profile, but you insert machines in your routine. Not silly things, not Excel macros, right? But, you know, start doing a bit of understanding. Talk with people that know about that. Make sure that in your diet, it's a bit like vegetables or fruit, right? You change your diet. It's going to be good for your career. So this is how continuous anticipation works. There is a postscriptum. So um, it was, I think, the spring in Milano. I, I live in Milano. There is this huge design week. Probably you've heard about that, right? So there is all this huge party, essentially. But sometimes it can be interesting. So there was this place in a remote warehouse where a company made an interesting experiment. So he put some piece of paper um, where they, there is only the title that says, um, what are you, uh, for example, do new technologies improve or worsen our world? I would describe the future to a child. I spent like three hours with my daughter and wife were like, hey, you shall go, right, move. let's move on. Because I wanted to see what people were posting there. I, it's super interesting. So this is a real photo that I took there. And then I was like, all right, now I have to write my own. And that was difficult. So I chose, because I was, uh, it was last year, so I was still working at Ferrari. Um, and so the topic was self-driving cars. And this is the way I, I put it. What will you do in a driverless car? Drive. <laughs> Thank you very much. I guess there can be some question. I suspect. Opening to questions, let me 
tell you, Paolo, that I most appreciate your speech, and it made me think at least uh, two things, two, two things, but I want to share with you two things that came to my mind. Uh, the first one is, well, uh, some of the recommendation and some of the mistakes me, lead me thinking that, well, we need more entrepreneurship in our lives and in our, prof in our both professional and also maybe personal lives. Right? Because what you say, continuous anticipation, uh, take several risks on a smaller scale. Yeah, this is about entrepreneurship, basically. Right? So I think that the ones that had, had the, the experience of working close to, to uh, entrepreneurs, or maybe having an entrepreneurial career, they will probably agree with me that mm, some of the things that you stress have to do with, ent with entrepreneurship. And, uh, okay, the second one is a joke. Uh, a place where you can uh, stay together with engineer, having a business background, is an MBA. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's your turn. <laughs> now let's, let's make a bit of debate or questions. There is a question down there. Someone is breaking the eye. Yeah, Hi. thank you. Hello, my name is Didier. Um, my question is following. You have a very interesting slide before, but you went very fast on this one, where you show the decrease if you don't go into the digital transformation. You know the one you have the leaders, the followers, and the laggards? Mm -hmm. And then you saw that the laggards are going down. Yeah. Uh, what is the scale, the time frame? Oh, you mean this one? I guess it's, it's taken from the Moore chasm, isn't it? No, no, no. It's not this one? No. It's this one, yeah, I guess. Yeah, this one, yeah. Okay. Um, you mean that, what is the time frame for that? Yeah. They took one, they took uh, uh, two years, right? Ah, two years. Which okay. is 20, uh, I, I took this slide in uh, 20, early 2017, this May, roughly, because I presented to another audience. Uh, so it was 16 and 15. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, uh, just um, something hi. on the, hi, my name is Dimitri, I actually work here and I'm doing the EMBA, so very good pitch. Uh, thank you, Gianluca. About continuous anticipation, um, I would like to refer actually to uh, Professor Catania's early uh, seed sowing. I'd like to go to the harvest at the moment. Um, this anticipation, you're anticipating, there's a media hype, media frenzy, about this anticipation, it's it's gonna it's gonna be computers and and so on. It, we're, we're basically humanity is succumbing or uh, surrendering to Google and Amazon and everything. Mm. But um, we're leaving out human human beings. I mean, there was this example where you have robots actually calling you up because you're not checking out on your. I mean, in the end, we're still humans and we're gonna have to make choices. So I don't. I'm a bit concerned. Now, this is the question and the. the criticism. I'm pretty concerned about this hyper anticipation. I understood your concept, but it seems to me that in this whole AI thing, this anticipation is about mm -hmm. how we're going to be uh, over and surrender to the Googles of the world. So okay. I don't know. I'd like some more insight on that, please. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, for, thank you for your question. I, um, I have no ambition to be um, a professor myself, so this came from a couple of or a bit more experiences in my life. Uh, for example, in, in one of my uh, experiences, I joined Corriere della Sera. Some of you know Corriere della Sera eventually is the biggest Italian newspaper, right? The most prestigious. It was founded in uh, 1878. Okay, so they called me to make sure that they could. 
do something with this digital thing, right? The fact that the internet was coming. Um, and because I had an experience in the biggest portal in Italy, they said, all right, you should join. Their attitude was, one day will happen, okay? It didn't, it didn't work like that, right? I mean, in two years, we started having zero revenue, right? The revenues were like tanking, like this. And they were starting to say, oh, we need to do cuts. Let's do cuts, right? Let's, do, let's send some journalists on there to well pay. Because you end up in that situation then, because then the, the account needs to stay together, right? I mean, the PL is the PL. So I won't recommend to anyone, and I don't recommend to my daughter to live in a stressful uh, anticipation of the fact that the robots will conquer the world, because that's not the right attitude. We have to live on our body, right, in our human entity. But in business, it's very dangerous. And we're talking business here. Personal life is another thing. I gave a smartphone to my daughter that is 14 when she was 12, just to be clear, right? I mean, don't get confused, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you are confused. I'm just saying what's my experience. In business environment, you would see dramatic transformations at the speed that you will never seen before in the next years. It's, it's an absolute, it's 100% sure. Try today to be out and say, oh, I have a retail business. First thing they're gonna, you, then you go to a bank and ask for money. They say, what about Amazon? Is it going to do something in your, oh, well, no, I sell whatever, furniture. Uh, what if Amazon starts selling furniture? <gasps> oh, I didn't think about that. I, I'm now talking with a friend that has a fantastic company that sells uh, hyper-quality food for two, three stars rest, Michelin restaurants. Great business, right? It's Hong Kong. It's London. He's in, it, it took 20 years for him to build this fantastic thing. He's worried like never before. What if someone starts selling this thing online? Now it's, it's rushing to try and understand how to make it work in online. It's a tiny company. It's 50 people at the end, right? It's just moving small small parcels of whatever salmon he imports, he imports fish from Japan to sell it in France, right? Just to give you a sense of how crazy the whole thing is. All this company will have some, some problem. So if you don't think in, in this anticipation, and he's, he's quite okay with that. I mean, he's not horribly worried, but still is saying, hmm, I'm starting hearing that someone will do something similar somewhere. And if, if I think, for example, from a country, for Italy, Italy lives out of export, right? That's what we are recently very good at, traditionally quite good at. It's a very, it can be very good digital for people that can export or very bad. Because people can attack our market easily. Right? Maybe not manufacturing plants, but uh, for example, all the agricultural product for sure. So my, my, my view is don't get nervous. It already happened. It's going to probably change completely your career. The only thing that I, that I recommend to the people that I hire and I work with is try and have a decent personal life because challenges will be ahead and they can destroy your life, right? It's, it's as simple as that. So make sure that you're a proper person. Don't, don't invest too much in this 100% career thing because the risk that one day you will be displaced is super high. So are you sure you want to do it? Be relaxed with that.
we're running late. Other questions? Then I want to give you a bit of a, a bit of an antidoctical thing. There is another question here. Thank you. Hi. Oops. Sorry. Luca from Trom. Um, just uh, you mentioned talent, and I totally agree with you. It's very important. Can you share your experience with hiring for your new venture? You mentioned Tartarneck. Yeah. How was? I guess is not. I never heard of it. Sorry. Uh, it is not huge, or and like a lot of startups, it's a mm. challenge to hire yeah. good talent. So can maybe you can share any advice about that. Yeah. Well, it's a terrible. It's a terrible challenge. So uh, this company is. Um, is 42 people now, 43 with me, uh, 28 are PhDs out of 42. So the bar is, is up there, right? Okay, so we, have, uh, we don't have any marketing person. I'm the only kind of mix between a human and a monkey. Uh, well, a human is a mathematician, a monkey is a marketeer, right? Uh, I'm the uh, kind of half-cooked. Um, so, and, and the business is, is doing great, right? Not just Tartanek, but also other sides of the business. We also have a B2B business and other stuff. Great. So now hiring. We're growing. We need to hire. Okay, so we have Lugano and Zurich. Zurich, Google. Right? You know that Google has this huge office in Zurich, right? So they get people when they actually sign in on university. I mean, day one, and they start saying, oh, do you want a product? You want to enter our program where we give you, you give, we give you a Pixel phone with a huge discount, right? And they start, you know, cocooning them. Then we come with a small company and say, hey, you want to join us? You have to have a, a, a different mentality, which is, I don't want to end up in a corporate world when I'm 22. I want to do something different. I want to deal with people that are more like me or they can teach me different things. So it's half, of course, content and half is mentality. You need people that have this entrepreneurship. And they understand that in a small company, no one do the Xeros, right? I mean, the CEO do the Xeros, right? I do it. I buy and sell advertising from my PC. One could say, oh, the VP of Digital of Ferrari. I don't care. It's my job. I do it, right? So you need people that are doers, right, that like to do things, make things happen. There are very few. That, that's the challenge. And on the hiring, I, you, you, you give me the opportunity to talk about my favorite hiring technique that is as follows. So um, when I worked for uh, MSN in Microsoft, MSN was the biggest editorial site in the world. We had 460 million users, huge, okay? So I needed to hire people that manage the portal. So of course, because it's Microsoft, you start with my right, Bocconi University, masters, all right, fantastic. Bring me the guys. All these, these super guys come in. And I says, oh, I did this. I went to this, and I did that, and I, and I know everything about this. I did a dissertation on this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fantastic, great, all wonderful. Then the guy uh, is, is leaving the room, and I say, oh, I have a very last question for you. So it's... Uh, Milano, July, uh, summer, 45 degrees out there, okay? It's morning, you have to go to work, okay? You leave your tiny flat, you have to go to work, so you, you make a shower and you dress properly, then you go down, and there is a taxi and the metro. Okay, what do you do? What do you do? No, I uh, take the, the taxi. You take the taxi. Why? Because uh, it will be uh, a hard journey. And uh, I don't want to be uh, very uh, mm -hmm. absorbed by, by uh, other things. Okay. 
crack. I understand it. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely understandable. Can you follow me for a second on the other path through the metro? Okay, so we walk together down, right? And we get in the metro, right? It gets hotter and wetter, right? And then the carriage is coming, right? It's packed like this. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay? Okay, good. Okay, you know the feeling, right? Okay, so you're there, it's open, you have to get in because otherwise you will be late. Okay, so you get in. What do you do when you're in the carriage? What do you do then? Okay, good. You try and survive, I guess, something like that. Okay, what do you see around you? Mm. How are they? They are uh, they, they need to go to work uh, on time and they are stressed. Mm. What do you notice about the people near you? They are on their phone. And, uh, They're on their phone. What type of phone? Uh, How are they dressed? What are they, they reading? Where do they come up and down? What is the most used stop? This is digital living, right? You have always to think that out there there is an audience. And the audience is the one in the metro. Forget about the tax. Which doesn't mean that I'm not going to hire you, right? <laughs> it's not about that. It's not about that. It's the mentality, right? It's all in the hands of the consumer. So you need to love your consumers. You need to smell the consumers. You need to love them, right? Stay side by side. Take the damn metro if you want to be successful in digital, which is ironical, right? Because one can say, no, it's all going to be run by algorithm. Exactly for that, you need to take the metro. Otherwise, you're going to live from a place to another in this closed environment where you're going to see PowerPoint slides with data. And one day, you won't be there at all because a machine is going to do that for you way better. I, take, I, I make a personal example of that. When I was running the Microsoft business, I traveled like half of my time in life, right? I was running EMEA, so Israel, and then this and that, fantastic. So, and you know, when you're in these companies, they say, all right, there is someone picking you up in the airport, bringing you to the uh, Sheraton. Then you go to the Microsoft office with a taxi that is booked, blah, blah, blah. Then one day I woke up and I said, what city am I in? I forgot it. Is it Amsterdam? I said, you show Sheraton, right? It's, you know, the furniture is always the same. Then I decided to stop with that shit. And I said, guys, don't book me any local transportation. Make sure that you book the planes in a way that I get earlier. And I'm going to take public transportation from now on. Because I'm missing, because we were running a consumer product, right? It was this MSN. MSN had 16 million users in Italy. Know where most of them were? Southern Italy. Small towns in Southern Italy. Never been there in my life. I never met one of those users ever, right? I lived in Milan, blah, blah, blah. That's wrong. Make sure that you stay as you know, as much as you know the machine, you need to know the human being. Because if you don't know the human being, you are not good at dealing with the human being, no machine will, will ever be uh, good enough, right? So if you want to be a leader, make sure you know the human being, be a, a fair human being, be a good human being, as much as you can, as we all can. Make sure you know how to bond and deal with machines, and the same effort put it with human beings. Don't get confused if I answer that other question. Any other questions? Please. Uh, Mike. It's more for the camera, right? My name is Ricky Ruff. I just wanted to ask you a quick question regarding the number two of your impact recommendations. Mm -hmm. So this idea of setting up a test and measuring the impact, in your experience, can you just speak to what the most effective KPIs are in terms of 
the impact, especially with respect to ad campaigns, and how you would actually quantify mm -hmm. the impact? Yeah. Thank you for the very practical question. I like it. And I'm doing that right now. So um, there is a huge debate on the fact that the funnel is over. Right? The idea of the funnel, so acquire, engage, monetize, you all know this, right, in digital. So you get, you harvest people, send them to a place, try and communicate stuff, and then put them in a place where they have to buy something. There is a huge debate on the fact that this is not the right way to go. Okay? It's all about attribution. So, you, for, let me make the, the automotive example. In automotive, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, before deciding to buy something, a consumer touched 17 different points of relation with the brand, which can be three times on the Facebook profile, then they go to the website, and they check a video, then they see an advertising on TV, and only after this 17, which is a rough number, they buy. Okay? So, of course, the easy answer is depends on the business. Uh, what I think is super relevant is uh, make sure that you don't build the KPIs in a way that they confirm your theory. Right? Get them from the, from the reality. Let me give you an example of that. So now we're selling um, insurances online. Okay? Upper side of the funnel, fantastic. CPM, great. CPC, wonderful. Landing page, a disaster. Right? No one buys the damn thing. Right? So how do you know that? Well, because you don't see the damn revenues coming in. So you could say, oh, but so then let's build a system in a way that no revenue, we cut the budget. Okay, so you don't learn anything about your audience. Now we have, for example, some hundred emails. And we, before I came in, we decided to run a survey on these people to ask them why you didn't buy it. Why? Which is something you can only do through digital. So I would recommend to have primary KPIs and kind of secondary KPIs that comes out as a side product of your experiment, almost for free, almost for free. Uh, and then you make sure that uh, at least you get learning out of what you do, learning. Because without learning, it's, it's way too easy. There is no easy business in the world. So if it's, if it's working at the first shot, there is something wrong with what you're doing. That's for sure. You are missing out something. So you'd rather have some bad results at times. It's like exercising. So I would recommend to use, okay, let me at this point. One of the difficulties of digital people like me is that when they go to companies, they say, we need to maximize the conversion on our CRM activities. Blah. And people look at you and say, what's that? We sell cars. So can you help me selling cars? <laughs> so your point is you have to sell the damn car. All the other stuff, don't even talk about this if you want to be part of that company. Otherwise, you are building your own career. Follow me on this because it's super important. There are a lot of people that do digital in a way that is self-referring. Yeah, yeah. self Right? So when they get hired by a company, they say, oh, here everything is, is broken. Right? This is all wrong. Right? We need to do it digitally. It's not the way to go. Try and get as much KPI as you can from the company. Ask your manager. Go to your manager. And I give you a Ferrari example. So in Ferrari, there are thousands of opinions on what's the key audience. If you talk to the, to the Formula One guy, he says, oh, there are the people with the flags. Second, the sponsors, because that pays the car, right? That, that is a mission. If you talk to the engineers, they say, oh, they are the people that drive the car. We want them to be happy. 
how do you build a digital strategy? It's complicated. What's the KPI there? Do you treat it as two separate companies? But at the end, it's one company. And digitally, it's one company. You go to Ferrari.com. Then you can get smart. And using technologies, you can say, right, I can get the cookie of the person. And if he's a 17 years old from Bangalore, for now, I'm going to tell him about how wonderful is our flag. Right? And eventually one day he's going to buy a flag or fly the flag. Okay? But if he's connecting from Silicon Valley, ah, that's not a great idea. He's not going to give a shit about our flag. He wants to know about how the technology is. Right? So the KPI can, can use in digital, you can isolate KPIs and make them live together in an experience up to what technology allows you to do, which is not everything. Forget about it. It's not magic. It's going to be super difficult. You're going to get a lot of mistakes. You're going to do a lot of silly things in between. But my one recommendation is talk to your manager. Sorry, it's a bit old school, but talk to your manager and, and make sure that the person tell you what are the priorities. Don't leave it to you. Because you're working for a company, you're not working for your own business, or build your own business. You go to your boss, as long as he's a human being, and say, what are your KPIs, boss? What do you want from me? And he's going to say, oh, sell the cars. Then you have to make it digital, in some form. Make it digital, right? So it can be, okay, so selling can be to send people to the dealers. For example, so how do we instrument the dealer in a way that they get the leads in a way that they can use the leads and pick up the phone and call the damn people? Fantastic. So we need the phone number. I'm going to change the experience in a way that people will put the damn phone number. It's an interesting KPI. Like, do we have the phone numbers of the people? It's a super important KPI. It's not like... Oh, we get three clicks divided seven using the DMP of the... Do we have the phone, call, the phone number? What's the completion? Oh, it's 30%. It's use, useless data. How do we get to 100%? Go for the very practical uh, platform-based KPIs. Those where you can set yourself reachable targets that people understand, like we need the phone numbers of all our customers, right? With a flag that says, I can call them. That's a good KPI. Very practical, simple, right? Make sure you do it. So don't overcomplicate things and make sure that your company provide you with guidance. Then if you are more in digital, uh, you have then to translate it to the engineers that have to do something, that's the job of a digital leader. There's no machine that can do that. Do I, did I answer your question? Yeah. And, okay, thank you. Any other question? No? I think we are all going to the... Any final remark? Uh, no, okay. Any final remark? No. <laughs> Aperitivo then. I oh, I have one. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It's a very good one. It's a very good one. I hope my daughter is not on connected now, right? <laughs> um, I would, I'd rather leave it to the professors in the room, but uh, I never stop studying. 
The only thing is, uh, what I try and do is to uh, always try and add fundamental knowledge. Uh, when, when I was studying philosophy, I mean, I studied economics, not business, right? And I did a dissertation in philosophy. And people were saying that I was crazy. Completely damn crazy. Like, why the hell are you studying that crap? It's completely unusable. I still refer on the stuff that I learned there. How to talk, how to, how to uh, think, how to put things in order, language, the power of language. So I guess that important thing is to, to keep separated learning um, the content of the job, which increasingly need to happen on the job, with fundamental knowledge. One of the things that drives me crazy, for example, when I talk to startuppers, is that they don't know anything about accounting, which is crazy. I mean, you're running a company, you don't know about accounting, or HR, basic HR. Not just startups, yeah. I mean, you, you always have basic knowledge that you need to compete. I'm missing huge pieces. I cannot call myself a marketing expert, for example. I still have a lot to study to get to the marketing quality, right? So, um, I, I, don't, I, I don't have a perfect answer to that, but if you stop studying whatever, you're not gonna go anywhere. That's 100% sure. Is it a bit defensive? Yes, it is, but... My, <clears throat> my comment would be, even the bad things uh, all disappear, right? But I find them in time to make my life better and funnier. This is, this is the same with learning. We know that at the end we will be under the ground, or whatever, dispersed somewhere. You don't stop but in learning. the meantime, mm -hmm. I try to do my best to learn. And I think that learning goes exactly what I And one, one important thing about learning, I think, is you understand, for example, so a lot of things, for example, in my profession are done by other people, like agencies or third parties, other stuff, right? And you have to understand what's the quality of the delivery. That's a big problem. You cannot leave it to someone else. So you have to know enough to say if your uh, vendor is cheating on you. Yep. Which looks like a simple thing, but not necessary. And let me give you a practical, can I give a practical sure. example on that? So I know I'm a friend of one of the biggest uh, internet entrepreneurs in Italy, right? A guy that built, that sold two companies in his life, one for 130 millions and one for 110 millions. Okay, now we built the third one in FinTech. Great, so I was at his home, now he lives in London. I was in his home, and, and he said, hey Paolo, I'm, I'm doing this thing, uh, do you want to be a beta tester for this? So he brought me to his cave, where he had this, the same PC that he had like 15 years ago. He said, I upgraded it myself, I did a bit of thing, because they're too expensive, so I had to manage that myself. And then we did all the stuff, right? And then I said, hey, look, I think that this label is not right. I, said, I don't get it. I said, well, give me a sec. Right. So it, boom. Check. Oh, it's done. He did it himself. Then we went for a cigarette. And he said, you know, uh, I'm building the website now for, the, for this new venture, right, which is an app in, in FinTech. It's a credit card application. And I went to a vendor, right? Because I said, oh, I have to, I'm working on the product, right? On the actual product. I mean, the credit card connector, all the damn complicated thing, and get the license, and the lawyers, and the VC, and all the rest. So I called the guys and said, build a website for me. They built the website, he checked and said, this is crap, I'm not paying you. Okay, so I called the other people that did the job. He checked it and says, this is, Horrible. Then we went back to his desk, and he had 
two books on his desk. That was like um, HTML5, you know what, it's this technology to do, HTML5 basic knowledge. And he said, I'm writing it myself now. <laughs> so it's not a money thing, it's, it's a mentality, right? To keep the quality, he needed to do it himself. And if you want to be successful, you need to have knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the more currency you have in this world. So make sure that you keep studying. One day there will be a website cr creator that will do this. Maybe. What if it's not happening? <laughs> you have a big problem. And if you don't know how the damn thing works, they're going to cheat on you. And then when, it get, when they steal all the credit card numbers, that's not right. So keep keep uh, learning things, even basic things, accounting, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Grazie.